Simona, it is a given that art affects our perceptions, our ways of thinking, cognition, or certainly our emotions. What I want to ask you as a cognitive scientist is, how does that process work? What is it about art that affects perception, cognition, emotion? See, I would, I would challenge already that statement to say that it's Good. a given that all these different processes are affected, simply because it's not clear that these are all different, that cognition, perception, emotion, that there are distinct categories that's far from clear at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, we used to try to categorize them and block them into different bins in a way, but you know, now that we know more and more about the brain, there are no lines drawn in the brain that separate out those systems. Sure, okay, I so, totally But I think that. that's a, in fact, but that's not a trivial matter. So it's really important to, um, to appreciate that, that these are not distinct categories. And then also by the same token, when you think of, okay, what, so, so to say that, okay, art, how does, it, how does it relate to all these different components? Once you break down the components, then also that the piece of, you know, the other side, art, how does it relate? Well, it becomes much more, fluid in a way. Well, I'm perfectly happy for you to combine these in, in, in some unified theory of, yes. of, uh, of uh, a brain mechanism sure. so that they're all together. Right. But we would all agree that art affects that collective. Whatever it is, art has yes. an effect on it. Yes. So I'm trying to understand what is it about art other than a simple sensation or right. a simple yes. perception That's right. that, that has that differential effect. Mm. I'm looking for the differential effect yes. of art on whatever this category yes. is in terms See, of when art. you say differential effect, then the key is as opposed to what. Okay. Right? So if you, right. if you right. think as an experimentalist, the question is not what's the effect of art on all these other processes, okay. but the effect of art as opposed to or compared to something else. Correct. Right? That's the way of studying it. You can only study it if you say art as opposed to non-art. But then, of course, the question is, well, what is the right non-art? <laughs> right. So we often right. run into art, that... Right. Well, exactly. We often run into that problem when we set up studies where it's clear that, yes, the experimental condition is about art, but then as opposed to what? Oh, that's, that's a very important point. A very important point. But, but yes. that's not a point that we can, we can uh, uh, state and then, and then uh, uh, just ignore it and sure. go on because yes. it's fundamental yes. 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 to understanding right. aesthetic yes. cognitivism. That's right. If you don't answer the question of the control as opposed to what, you, well, that's you can't it. make any progress. Well, that's it. And I think that's partly why we know so little about how all this works, how art works, because we haven't done all these controlled experiments where we pit art against something. You know, ideally, it should be something that's comparable in terms of the magnitude, in terms of how powerful, evocative it is, you know, when you have the two experimental conditions. But almost by default, almost by definition, art is evocative. Art is about challenging people and all these things. So what, what is the non-art control? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it sounds like a simple question, well, but it, it this relates is the most to... fundamental question. It relates to how to best study it, and that's not trivial right. at all. Right, so let, let's let you and I try to figure it out right now. Nobody else yes. has ever done it, but you and I could do it in a few minutes. I'm absolutely Of convinced. course. So for example, if, if you were studying me and uh, I, I would tell you that, uh, for example, a Mahler's Fifth Symphony, uh, at one point in my life, was my favorite symphony. Right, yes. And Mahler's First Symphony was almost trivial to me. I, I yes. you know, everybody said I should like it. I liked it, but I, I didn't really like it. Right, uh, right. It had nothing to do with it. There was a, some some uh, some uh, a vocal in it. It, it, it just Mahler's first image just never had an effect on me. Yes. It just did. So I, I am there for the control. I have my own yes. internal control. How would you, how would right. you, how would you study me? Well, well, much as I respect <laughs> your experience, but I would need at least you know a hundred Roberts to kind of <laughs> compare and okay. contrast. So so you know as always one looks at lots of different people, tries to average across experiences. So other people may have not have the same experience to Mahler, but other types of music, well, of, let's of say, Of course, right? I, I, but I'm so, saying you take a similar kind of, of, of artistic expression. It doesn't yes. have to be music. It certainly doesn't have to be Mahler. Sure, it could be sure. any art, but that are similar, that people have a very yes. strong reaction to sure. one and, that's right. and, and yes. don't to the other, that's right. and yet that's they're right. very similar. Yeah, exactly. So, so I don't one know could. Why I that's have right. That so, but would one could, for example, ask people, okay, what is the most evocative piece of music for you, as opposed to one that is, you know, relatively unexciting, right. and get that response from lots of people, right. and then even though it's not the same piece of art, probably not necessarily, but you have you create those two contrasting conditions, yes. 
And then you have exactly, you have, as you said, the control, you have your internal control. And then one can ask all kinds of questions, you know, what, what kind of effect like, does like, that like, have like, on what, your... What, what kind of questions would you ask if you had um, the internal control? The, the, the... Right. So let's say you, we first ask you to listen to the, the piece of mala that you're really excited about. And then we ask you questions, let's say, about how you feel about your life, how satisfied you are mm -hmm. with your life. This would be a general measure of well-being. Yeah, I'm never satisfied, but that's another Well, issue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but then the interesting thing is if you're never satisfied, you're not satisfied in either of those conditions, right? <laughs> so, so we can subtract that bit right. that is constant because you're just a negative person. Mm -hmm. And we do that for everybody else who may have a different baseline. Yeah, okay, so that's good. That's, that's exactly, good. so we can okay. factor out that aspect of, of your personality. Okay. So, so... But the bottom line being that we have that comparison for each person, something that they appreciate versus not. Right. And then the effect, kind of thing. exactly, the effect of that on a rating of, let's say, life satisfaction. A and you can do that not just on life satisfaction, but on a whole range of absolutely. potentially exactly. dependent exactly. variables. Absolutely, exactly, absolutely. So right. how many different kinds of questions would you have? Just order of magnitude. Is yes. it five or is it 50? Depends what you're interested in. You know, there is no ready-made, you know, out-of-the-box kind no, we're of... we're dealing with aesthetic cognitivism as, as, yes. as, as a concept, I mean... Well, it, but it, that's the thing, How, what exactly, what aspect of it are you interested in, right? Uh -huh. I mean, um, a, a rather, a good, on a good both experiment ends. would have how, uh, would have roughly how many questions, would you think? Uh, or how many things, if we, if we yeah. had the independent variable of, or, or the, uh, the internal control, yes, yes, uh, yes. how many questions would you want to try to assess given that experimental right. design. See, it depends. So, so something like life satisfaction or well-being in general, yeah. it's usually defined as a simple question of how satisfied are you with life, yeah. how positive do you feel, how, yeah. how negative, positive and negative affect. So these right. three aspects. So right. that would be fairly straightforward. But then if one were to look at other type of outcome variables, as opposed to well-being, they would be captured in a different way. So it, it completely de depends. There's no such you know, mm. short answer of, of how many questions mm. to ask or, mm. or what's the best, best technique mm. to get at something. You think I'd be a good experimental subject? Of course, <laughs> of course. Already from what you told me, you know, I think there's a lot, lot of depth to explore. <laughs>